So everyone, welcome to our community update for August 24th, end of August already. I can't believe it, the time flies. <laughs> uh, all right, let's just, there we go. So let's jump into a couple of community statistics. We now have a total of 86 open source developers on GitHub and 1,234 GitHub stars as of this morning. In the last two weeks, we have added about 62 new community members to our Slack. Although if Chris just joined, it's actually 63. So thank you, Chris, for bumping our numbers one more. And about 57 new community members that are spread across some of our other platforms. So as always, welcome to all of our new and returning members. A quick update on the release date for the next uh, major release 12.0 that is now set for September 7th. This just happens to coincide with our next biweekly community update. We didn't plan that at all. <laughs> and so on that update, we'll do, we'll do some demos on some of these really exciting features that you're, you can expect to see kind of being implemented throughout uh, or later on in the day. So be sure to join our next meeting to get some really great uh, demos uh, for that. Now we have a couple of exciting updates. We have not one, but two new team members that are joining us. So the first is Aniket. He is joining our UI team and has actually already been working on a couple of new features and issues. We were very lucky to have Aniket join us after completing his bachelor's in civil engineering. And he's been specializing in front end tech uh, like the num variety of the uh, technologies that you see here, including HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Uh, and so before we officially welcome him, I want to introduce our other new teammate, which is Ashish. He's actually a self-taught front-end developer who's also joining our UI team. He received a bachelor's in computer applications, and he's skilled in a number of front-end languages like uh, Tailwind, CSS, and JavaScript, including a couple of other ones as well. We are so excited to welcome both of you. Please join me in welcoming Ashish and Aniket. Thanks, guys, for joining. We're really excited to have you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. It's so great to have you here. So the majority of today, we're going to spend on a couple of demos from the team. We're going to, what we're going to be doing is giving you a run through of how to get up and running quickly with open metadata, first with Docker via cache, and then with AWS services with Vijay. So uh, Akash, I believe you wanted to share your screen with everyone and do that demo walkthrough. Hey, Marisa, uh, before we handing over to Akash, uh, can we do a sneak peek of data quality? Uh, I think Teddy is going to do that. So. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you want Teddy? Yeah. Yeah. So there is some miscommunication between handling yeah, yeah. all that presentation. Okay. Oh, sorry. My, <clears throat> my bad. Yeah, we do, we just wanted to get everyone excited before the the full demo with a sneak peek of the uh, the the work that the the, the team has done on uh, on the profiler. So it's going to be a very very quick sneak peek, two three minutes, nothing uh, nothing more. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, get started. So, um, basically, in the in the next release, once you are going to 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 install uh, Point Web, uh, when you go when you will go to the profiler, you will land on a revamp page that will show you uh, some table statistics at the top and uh, the column statistics uh, at the bottom. And what is pretty cool is that now you can you'll be able to drill down for a specific uh, column to see the um, more detailed uh, statistics of that specific column. And not only you'll be able to do that, you'll also be able to see a time series of your statistic so that you are able to understand the evolution of your, of your table and how your columns are evolving, et cetera. So by default, we'll have uh, it'll be set to three days, but you'll be able to expand that date range and um, and have a, a, a greater view of your um, of your metrics. 
Um, another element that we've added is the ability to set a profile sample. So that will allow you to um, well, reduce the amount of data that will be used to compute the metric. So if you find that's uh, import important for you, you are able to set either a percentage or you are able to define a custom query to uh, define how you want to that sample person that that sample data to to be used. You'll also be able to exclude specific columns, include specific columns, and then filter out specific metrics um, for computing your profile. Yeah, I think um, one of the feedback we heard was uh, there are large tables and profiling them is very expensive. So you, know, you choose how much percentage of data you want to profile, and you can also control based on you know only certain columns you can profile. You don't have to you know profile everything. So so the control is yours. Exactly. <clears throat> and then two new elements that we've added as well uh, when you create a profiler workflow is the ability to set a percentage at the workflow level. So if you want to have all of your tables to use a specific uh, profile percentage, then you can set it at the workflow level. Um, if within your workflow you want to change the percentage of a specific table, you can still adjust it at the table level, and that will take precedent over the uh, workflow percentage. And then we've also added a, a new uh, thread count parameter, uh, as we will now in uh, point 12 compute the metrics for a specific table using multi-threading, which will significantly speed up the uh, computation of all of those metrics. And we added the ability for you to adjust uh, the, the thread count. Um, and so that's the sneak peek. There is more to come, more demo, uh, more details, but we just wanted you, you guys to get excited with, with all the work that uh, the team has done so far. It looks and, fantastic. Very exciting. Yeah. <laughs> it worked. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, the UI looks great. OK, so back to our regular programming. <laughs> Akash, you want to uh, do your demo? for joining us today. I'm going to walk through how can you bring up open metadata and all of its required services using Docker. We documented all of the steps I'm going to show today in our docs. You can visit docs.openmetadata.org and click on try open metadata in Docker. So before going through this, let's start looking at uh, the architecture of open metadata. So open metadata has four components. The first one is the, the Java server that is responsible for all the APIs, all the ingestion schemas and everything else. So it's uh, it's built using Drop Wizard and runs on Jetty. Uh, it runs in Java. So the next part is the MySQL database. All the data that is coming through the APIs, any user generated content and everything gets stored into MySQL. And then there is Elasticsearch. So we, we update all the changes that's coming through the APIs into the Elasticsearch so that they are readily available for um, searching discovery use cases so that user can go to explore page, search based on column names, tags, or whatever, right? And lastly, we have Apache Airflow. We use Apache Airflow to schedule our metadata ingestion workflows so that they can run periodically and continue to push latest metadata from your data sources. Now let's go back to our documentation here, try open metadata in Docker. Let's look at the requirements. In this demo, I'm running this on Mac, so I'm going to only look at OS X, but we also documented necessary steps for Linux and Windows. So let's check uh, Docker version. The requirement is we should at least have 2.0, and dot zero, right? So I'm going to copy paste this command here and go to a terminal. Let's look at this. So Docker version is 2010.10. So that is greater. Great, we have the required Docker here. We also need to check Docker Compose version. Let's look at that. And the Docker Compose version is 2.1.1. And that is what we needed. And that's great, we have the required Docker install and running. One thing you must pay attention to is we need at least six GB of memory. 
So let's look at how to set that up. So if your have Docker, it will be running in your taskbar for the Mac. Click on the preferences. And under the resources, you will see the memory. If it's lower, please make it at least 6 GB or higher. In this case, I have 7 GB, which is great. So all the prerequisites that I required is satisfied. Now let's go to the procedure itself. So the first step is uh, creating a directory for open metadata. I'm going to just copy here, go to my terminal, and I'm going to copy paste here. So it create the open metadata Docker, and we change the directory. Good. Now I'm going to create a Python environment. The reason why we are doing this is we built a metadata injection package specifically to bring Docker so that you know you don't need to worry about running all the Docker commands. It's much more user friendly that way. Right. So then I'm going to copy paste this one to activate the environment that we just created. You don't need to pay too much attention. Just copy paste all of these things. Make sure there are no errors are occurring here. This is the important step, the step five. This is where we are actually installing the Docker package, right? So I'm going to do that. There it is. All right, we have our Docker package installed. I'm gonna clean that up. Now, this is a command to verify if everything installed properly. So I'm gonna copy paste here. Right. Everything looks great. I got my help menu. That's great. Now, the only thing that you need to do here is metadata docker start. Right. I'm going to copy this and hit enter. So what it's doing? So it's actually going and getting our latest release and downloads the Docker Compose file and bring downloads all the images and brings up under one network. So this may take anywhere between three to 10 minutes, depending on your network connection, just because it's downloading all the required images from Docker Hub. So let's wait for it to uh, go through its process and then we can go on to the next step. Open metadata up and running. You will see this message. I will see where to access the open metadata. And it took around one minute, 30 seconds. Again, it depends on your connection speed, how fast we can download the images. Now I'm gonna copy the URL presented here to me, right? And I'm gonna open in my browser. There, that's the open metadata UI. As you can see, we do not have any data yet. Now, as part of the next steps, we're gonna go and connect to a Snowflake instance. So to do that, you need to click settings and click on the services and click here to add a new service, right? So we have around 52 connectors with databases, pipelines, um, dashboard services, whatnot. To make it easy, you can actually search for the service you want. In this case, I want Snowflake. I'm gonna click on that. And service name is a meaningful service name. You might have different clusters, so make sure they are all unique. So in this case, I'm gonna call Snowflake cluster one and write a meaningful description so that others can find useful. And let's copy paste. So I already have a connection string available for me. I'm going to copy paste. So bear with me in this process. And the last required field I need is the warehouse. So let me finish that. Right. So I filled in my account and I filled in my username and password and warehouse. These are the required fields. For more details, please reach to uh, docs and we document every step and what you need to do here with additional fields. So to quickly, before I deploy, go to the next step, I want to make sure the username, password, the URL that I gave is all good. So I'm gonna click test connection. Great, it will give me immediately connection is successful. I'm gonna save this. Now I have an option to add ingestion. So this is a part where it actually talks to Snowflake, brings all the data warehouses, schemas, and tables. So you have like filter patterns here. So for example, you only want to kind of 
do a POC here, want to look at one database, you can actually filter out the rest of them by using include exclude filters, right? So in this case, I'm gonna actually fetch all the tables that I need. Um, there are a bunch of options here. Please read through our documentation, but you can, it's fairly safe to leave it as uh, defaults, right? Uh, this is a step if you're using DPT and want to connect to all your DPT models within uh, open metadata, you can actually configure it. Uh, you have multiple ways of configuring it. Uh, if you are uploading your manifest and catalog JSONs, you can configure it to PR, you can point to those files uh, using local disk and all that stuff, right? So in this case, I'm gonna ignore that and I'm gonna go to the next step. Um, this is a schedule interval. Uh, you have different customization here. You know, if you want hourly, daily, weekly, or minutes, I'm gonna keep it at default and I'll say add and deploy. Great, my connection is set up. My job is deployed successfully. Let me go back to the UI and see how they are doing. So you can click on the ingestion job, you can see the status running. And you can also click on the logs to see uh, how things are going. If you run into any issues, it's easier to kind of understand what's going on here by looking at the logs, right? And as it's running, you can also see the database is coming through. So this is a database in my Snowflake DB. It's already fetched and available. You can click here, you can see different schemas. Underneath the public, I have all the tables. Interestingly enough, we're actually fetching the description from the Snowflake and attaching it here as well. So now let's go back to our main page, right? Now, before we had zero, we now we have 26 tables and one service that we just added. So let me click on the tables. I see all the tables that I have. I can actually start doing a you know, keyword-based search and just type who, all the tables that matches this text is available here, right? I can go here and add a meaningful description and save it. Similarly, I can add PI tags. Right, so there it is. Now you can play around uh, with open metadata. For more details, go to the docs, explore our docs. You have lot of features that you can explore. You can go through the overview and features that we support right now. And also always come to our Slack if you have any questions and any support you may need. So we just round up to summarize. We went to open metadata documentation. We learned a bit about architecture of all the components involved. Then we went to try open metadata and Docker just follow the steps to the T. Like if you're running in a different platform, please make sure the prerequisites are satisfied before we go to the next steps and just go through these steps, copy paste, and you know, open metadata is up and running. Then we went to settings, services, connect to a snowflake, fetch all the metadata that is there. As you can see, it's still running and more metadata is being grabbed here. I that's all for this demo on how to get open metadata up and running in your local host under, I believe, probably taking 10 minutes, might be less, but you know, it's really simple to start. Again, if you run into any issues, please reach out to our Slack and you know, we are all available in, in the support channel. In the next demo, uh, we're gonna talk about now you have a POC within your local Docker. How about you want to share this instance with your coworkers, within your team? And we will show in this demo how to deploy uh, in AWS using AWS RDS and um, open search. Thank you so much. Thanks very much for the demo guys. I want to take a quick second and ask if any of the community members had any questions before we finish off our uh, meeting today. Uh, if Oh, yeah, yeah I have a quick question. Sorry, yeah. I think this is my first uh, meeting with you all. So mm -hmm. I, I just want to understand, like, if there, it is documented anyway, so that I can just go ahead step by step and also talk with my team members and get back to you guys. Um, uh, yeah. You're, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> you're asking for the deployment, right, Arpita? Uh, yeah, because I just... Uh, I, I don't know, like I tried with Sandbox earlier. I never tried before the first time I, when I was trying, it was, it, it showed me like, I'm not an admin. So I want to, from my end, I want to do a, you know, small kind of testing before yeah. I deploy in, in our, you know, environment or like in our company. So I just want to do small kind of testing from my end. 
Yeah, I just pasted a link uh, in the Zoom chat. Uh, mm -hmm. So you should be able to run this locally in your laptop. Mm -hmm. That's one option. And obviously you can go to the sandbox. If you want to kind of have a elevator privilege in sandbox, we can you know, obviously make you an admin and kind of play around with it, but you won't be able to bring your own data and all the stuff. So we recommend you know, uh, deploying within your local laptop and kind of playing around with it. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's an awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, actually, we'll, we'll send you the documentation. Now, yeah. getting documentation right from user's perspective is very hard because, you know, most of us know how to do this and been doing this many times, right? So uh, it would be great uh, when you run through this. If you have any comments, let us know. Also, you know, you can update and contribute the documentation update from the user perspective, right, yourself. So we have a video on how to update the documentation. Uh, it would be great, you know, if you can provide that feedback from user's perspective uh, so that we can capture all the questions that come up uh, in user's mind when they are running through the documentation. Yeah, yeah, sounds great. Yeah, when we do it, definitely we'll let you know then. Uh, also, just to add on to uh, Suresh's point, uh, we would have this recording also available uh, in some time. So Marisa would be the one who would be taking the lead and uh, providing an update when this is available on YouTube so that you can go through this once again. Yeah, sounds cool. Usually up by the end of the day, sometimes uh, on Thursdays after the meeting. So I will be pinging the R Slack community to to let you know when that when that goes live so you guys can check it out again if you missed it or you wanted to review okay and uh i think if there are any other questions irrespective of the deployment related stuff in general about open data feel free to chime uh, not related to the subject that's fine If we don't have any more questions, I'll finish with a couple of slides on our community contributions like I generally do. Okay, these are just a couple of slides to end off our meeting. We have three merged community PRs in the last couple of weeks. One from Christian, one from Naradoshi99, and another from uh, Luan Pashbol on GitHub. So thank you to each of those for their, um, uh, their pull requests to our GitHub. We also have a number 15 people who have uh, graciously reported issues, open feature requests, let us know about you know, bug reports and things on our open metadata. Um, so thank you all so much for doing that. That's how we make open metadata even better is by you know, all of the community active activities that you guys do. So thank you so much. And our final slide is highlighting some of our most active community members from the last couple of weeks. That includes Upen, Andre, Preeti, Jeremy, and Layla. So thank you guys for your contributions. And did I did I potentially hear somebody wanted to ask a, a general open metadata question earlier? No, I thought I might have heard somebody come off uh, come off mute there for a second. If we didn't have any more questions, we can end at any time. Uh, one last thing, uh, we are super excited about the point 12 release. Uh, it's coming in two weeks time, coincides with that community meeting, please join us and we'll go through the whole stuff, uh, demos and feature talk and designs and all that stuff. I think it will be really uh, great for the community to kind of listen in and see what's coming in. And also please give us the feedback as always uh, in the support or in the Slack. Thanks everyone. All right. Great, thank, thank you all you. so much. Bye now. Thank you. See you, Bye. Thank you. See you later. Thanks for coming. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye now.